Hey guys, how you doing? My name is TJ and today I will be teaching you the basics of HTML. So open up your browser and go to jsbin.com. When you get there, make sure that you delete everything in this HTML column here. And let us start from scratch. So HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. HTML is not a programming language, but a markup language, which is used to define the structure of your content. Now, every single web page that you interact with has HTML code in it because that is how your browser displays information. Now, HTML code is referred to as HTML elements, and each HTML element consists of an opening tag and a closing tag with the content between it. This is an example of an HTML element. So this is a P element and the P stands for paragraph. So anytime that you want to add some, uh, some text content to your web page, you will typically be, be using a P element. Now in this element, our opening tag has the name of the element wrapped in angle brackets. And, the, and this is the opening tag and the name of the element is this P here. And then the closing tag has a forward slash right before the name of the element. And this now denotes that this is the end of this content. And then our content, what the user will actually see is displayed between the opening and closing tag, okay? So HTML code is referred to as HTML elements. And each HTML element has an opening tag, a closing tag, and the closing is, is marked by this, by this forward slash, and then it has the content between it. Now I will explain everything as we go. So just take this line and delete this line as well. Now, anytime that you want to create a web page, the very first thing that you do is have to specify the actual doc type for the browser. Now, this line of code here tells the browser that you want to create an HTML document. That's it. After that, this is when we now start our HTML document by using our HTML tag. So we just write, HTML. Now, all of the content for our web page goes between the opening and closing HTML tag. So now that we've started our, our HTML tag, the first thing that we do is put our head element. So the head is where you add additional information about your web page that will typically not be displayed to the actual user. Okay, but the main piece of information that you that you have to include in your head element is your title element. This is the title of the web page. And we can call ours my first web page. So this title here does not show up show up on the actual body of your web page but it'll show up in the tab on the browser okay now after you have your head element the the very next thing that you add is your body element now our body is where all of the content that the user will see actually goes the first thing that we want to add is a heading, right? So how do we add a heading to, to our HTML page? Well, just Google it actually. And Googling is one of the most important skills that you as a software engineer have to build because you are always going to be looking things up and it is your job to know how to search for things. So you don't really have to memorize everything in this tutorial. You just have to get familiar enough to know what to search for anytime that you are Googling. So we are trying to, have to, to add a heading to our HTML web page. And the way that I 
typically try to search is by first typing out the language in, and in this case it's HTML and then after that I tap I type what I'm actually trying to do I am trying to add a heading that's it HTML add a heading now W3 schools is a really good resource to learn basics of almost any programming language so let us see what they have to say about adding HTML headings all right as we see here we're seeing headings one two three four five all the way down to six so headings are defined with the h1 to h6 tags okay h1 defines the most important I guess that's why it's the biggest a6 defines the least important all right so this is how we add a heading to our web page so let's now go back to here and let's use an h1 so always always first add your opening and closing tag before adding your content and the main reason why I always advise to to do this is because sometimes uh, you know I, I've seen a lot of people start by just adding the opening tag then they start typing out the content but then forget to put the closing tag and that is bad syntax that it really mess up your code all right so always just start with the opening and closing and boom and now add your content so let's create an about page all right so now that we have our heading let's try to add an image in html now the thing about html is any type of content that you are trying to add there is a html tag out there for it so just like how now we wanted to add this heading we found a heading tag html headings you know so if we want to do an image let's just google html add add an image Mm, all right w3 schools comes up again so let's look at how you add images in HTML let's scroll down here and we see in HTML images are defined with the IMG tag the IMG tag is empty it contains attributes only and does not have a closing tag oh and that's very important so so re remember earlier I was saying that you typically have an opening and a closing tag but the thing is not every HTML tag or element has a closing tag. Some are called empty elements that are self-closing, meaning, meaning that they only contain attributes that help define what the content is. So here in this case, the way that we add our, an image is by using this image tag and having this SRC attribute. So SRC attribute specifies the URL or web address of the image awesome so let's go back here and we don't have an image to add yet but let's go find one um here let's go to roots technology dot info and let's grab this image from my website so just right click on it and you should be able to open an image in a new tab and this will give you the actual URL of the image. So let's see if that works. Boom, it works. All right, so now that we have our image, let's go look to see if there's anything else that, that we should be adding. What is this, the alt attribute? The value of the alt attribute should describe the image. And this is important for users that may be using a screen reader or have slow connection okay so let's go add an alt attribute so alt how can we describe this image this is basically a group of students um, writing code like you guys are and I think I saw some other things that we could do as well oh we can also change our image size by adjusting the width and height so all we have to do is add width and specify it and down here it says that the width and height are measured in pixels so we can just put width 500 height 600 
All right, let's see if that works for us. So let's go back and type with, uh, let's do 300. Oh, and that made it smaller. Let's do high 200. Let's see what this looks like if we change it to four to 400. Okay, makes it a lot bigger. So let's go back down to three. So now that we have our image, what else can we add? Um, let us add a paragraph. And I say paragraph instead of text because in HTML, there is not a text tag per se. There is a paragraph tag or a P tag. So let us look that up. HTML uh, par paragraph tag. HTML P tag. A paragraph is marked. Okay. So anytime that we that we want to add a paragraph tag or just kind of basic text, we will typically be using the P tag. And again, we just have our opening and closing P tag, then we have the content right in the middle. So let's yeah, let's start right there and let's put our P tag and let's write uh, three facts about me because after this we are going to add a list of facts about us. So how do we add a list in HTML? Well Google is your best friend so go to HTML uh, add list and let's see what Google brings up. All right. So HTML has two types of lists that you can add. You can either have an unordered list that is bullet points or an ordered list that is numbered. So if you wanted to add an unordered list, you always start with the UL, okay, for unordered. And each list item starts with the LI tag. And this is the example that they give us right here. Okay, so this is how we would create something like this. All right, let's create our list of interesting facts. So we do UL. Again, we do our opening and our closing UL. And the first fact about me is I used to work as a business analyst. And then Let's add a second fact. Remember, always just do your opening and closing and then come back to add your content. I taught myself how to code. And let's add one more. Now, I work as a software engineer. Awesome. So now our web page has has a heading, an image, some text, and we now have our list. Interesting, let's see what will happen if we change this U to an O. So when you see that, it changed already to a numbered list. But let's change that back to a U. I like the bullet points better. You have created your very first HTML web page. Now, if you want to save this code for our future lesson where, where we actually style this code, just go down here and click bin info and click download. And let's save this to our desktop and just call it a web page. And make sure that you add the .html because this now denotes that this document is an HTML document. See down here? Now click Save. And we have our HTML document. So if you go here and you, and you double click, this will now open up this document in your browser. Now the main takeaways are, remember, HTML has an opening tag and a closing tag, and a closing tag is marked by the forward slash, and then you have the content in between. Now, not every tag in HTML is gonna have a closing tag. 
Some tags don't have any content between them. They use attributes like this to basically get that content. So this is our image tag, right? Like you wouldn't type an actual image. You would have a link to your image, which is why this makes sense. So you have the source and this source is pointing to our JPEG file of the actual image. And again, congrats on writing your, your very first HTML web page. Good job.